Welcome to Old's Mob 455 Shop. My name is Paul, and today we're going to talk about a situation that can really mess up your day. It doesn't matter what you're working on, whatever part it is. There comes a time when threads need to be cleaned up. When you're working with different materials like cast iron or aluminum, you just got to be real patient, a lot of lubrication, and you can run into this. A friend of mine was making this part and he's going into aluminum and he's tapping in her and you can't rush it. You just gotta go back and forth, small pieces. All you're doing is moving metal and hopefully it's gonna drop into the four flutes or three flutes, whatever type tap you have and you're deforming the metal and you're making a thread. Well, if you get it going too much and it's bound up and you, you're trying to back it off and all of a sudden this real hardened tap can't flex that much and tink it's snapped off now what do you do you got to get that thing out of there before you can finish your project here's the piece of tap that was snapped off okay Some taps have four flutes and four cutting edges, and some have three. So you would need the tool that is accordingly matches up. If you add one that has three, then they'd be th three bigger pins, okay? But all this is is a fluted shank with a square head that you can put an adjustable wrench on and the pieces snapped off in there and you find these four flutes this has been broken on multiple times so you just grind them flat you gotta get them all even and then you stuff that into these four pieces I can't even do it but you get the idea you're going to work your way in and then once you shove them into them four grooves then you push you know this collar down there to stabilize it and if it's inside there where else can they go the only thing they can do is turn well it didn't want to come out so yeah if you have a torch and being aluminum this will absorb heat start out far away and you're putting torque, you're only using a little adjustable wrench this big, and you're on here, and it's, you're going like this, and it doesn't want to move. And believe me, you can break these things. They're, they're just hardened little pins that fit in these little troughs. But when it's in there, where else can it go? You know? So you're working with another hardened item. And as you push that collar down there and you give it and it doesn't want to go, then you're going to have to warm up this metal around there and make it grow so that you can end up getting it out. Sometimes you got to use lubricant or whatever, but this one we just heat it up and boom, it just unscrewed and now you can get on with your day. We were just talking about this. This is another item that can break and after it's broke you put it on the belt sander and you gotta align up all of them and then clean them up so they fit down in the grooves but these pieces here can be replaced they're like a hardened pin that fits right inside this groove and as you slide that collar down first these things go up underneath there and they're engaged in this hole. It just fell apart and I put it back together. You got to be a little oop, tedious, but then once you've got it all locked in and pushed down, then it turns and gets your broken tap out. You get the idea. Right there. So here's the here's the tap you can see how fragile this thing is if you look down the end of it all four of these scallops are taking away a lot of this material 
and now you want to put threads on the inside of this hole like I was saying before you gotta really lubricate this thing and watch me I'll probably snap one off too but just keep it as straight as possible when you feel there's a resistance you know it, there's threads in here already otherwise I'd be going back and forth the going back action drops the metal down into the little troughs otherwise when I'm going forward I'm just taking these sharpened helical cut grooves and deforming the metal on the inside of the hole and making threads so now it's tight I gotta back up it's getting real tight and there's different types of taps let's say if you have a, a situation where it's going to be a blind hole that means that there's a bottom to it and the crumbs can go to the bottom and you want to have as many threads as possible to hold something on like a head you would want to start out with a tapered tap and then get a bottoming tap where you would grind the bottom flat because this is all wasted space you could get another three threads of holding power if you used a bottoming tap that's starting to bind up now we realize we're not talking to people I mean these videos aren't made for chip foos <laughs> we're, we're trying to help you guys out that haven't ever done this kind of stuff now if you're lucky and you got a dad and he's out in the garage and he's working on stuff and you got a bicycle or a wagon or something and you're working on that's how you start learning but some guys never did that and you don't have to be afraid to start this stuff you can start at any age and the more you get to doing it and solving your own problems you won't have to ask anybody else for help when you screw up it won't hold up your whole night you can move on to the next item Plus, you don't have to tell anybody that you screwed up. <laughs> There's another situation that might hinder your process for the night, and that's when you're working on a car, and we're in Wisconsin where everything rusts, and you go to take out a bolt, and you've heated it up, you've squirted, you know, penetrant as good as you can, but you pull it, and you're taking threads with it you bring it out and it, it, you can't even get another bolt in it's all screwed up now what do you do it's got some weird thread the other day we were working with 12 millimeter we didn't have a tap for a 12 millimeter what do you do you gotta get this car done because you gotta go to work the next day what you can do is take the bolt that goes into that you can always go buy another bolt but take your cutoff wheel and grind a groove right down the center of the bolt so you're making a trough and then file it so you got a flat edge in the direction that it's going to be turning okay make that edge that's going to be screwing in it would be going to the right it's going to be flat so as you're going in there there's nowhere else for the metal to go if you get a couple threads started, when it gets into the area where the threads are bad, it's going to say, hey, there's a clogged up trough you know, in this thread. And it's going to take it along for a ride around the, the groove, and it'll dump into that trough that, that you've made. And you use tons of lubricant, and it will clean up those threads, and you can get that thing done and be on your merry way just with the wasted one bolt you're better off getting a brand new bolt for that job. Hope that helps you out.